Hello, Year 7s. As part of the work that we're doing in MeSH, there is a survey component. So I wanted to talk to you fairly quickly about some of the stuff that I'd like you to keep in mind while you're constructing a survey. I think the thing that's worth talking about first is why we survey at all. The reason that we collect survey is to get data so that we can actually talk about the world as we have measured it. So if I wanted to know how long an object was, rather than thinking about it or talking about it, and these other things that might give me a rough idea, you actually go out into the world and you measure it. Likewise, if I want to know how many people in a group would prefer to go for a run or go for a walk, I would do a survey of those people. And a survey just means that you are collecting data. So when you see people out doing surveys of roads and things, surveyors, they are in fact collecting data about the world. They're not guessing, they're actually going out with specific tools that they're using in a professional way and they're collecting information so that they have an accurate view of the world. And this is why we do surveys too. So that instead of saying, oh, most people would rather go for a run based on just a feeling that I have or the fact that perhaps I would like to go for a run, I can actually say, I surveyed a group of, you know, 140 students and 112 of that group said that they would like to go for a run. And I might express it as a percentage. I might say, you know, 68% of people said they wanted to go for a run or more than two thirds of people said that they wanted to go for a run. But I am talking about stuff that I've actually collected. I did the survey. So a survey is a way of collecting data about the world, not just talking in generalities. You only get data as good as the questions that you ask. Like if you're doing a, a survey of a road or a building site, if you don't do, set up the equipment properly, you won't get the correct data. You'll get errors in it. Likewise, there are good questions and better questions. So for example, here is an example of a, of a question. I'm not going to say it's a particularly good question, but it's an example of a question. Footy or soccer? Now, if you ask people footy or soccer, they will choose between the two and you can record their answers and you might say 60% of people said soccer and 40% of people said footy. And what some people might have heard you say or think you said was, which would you prefer to play? Some of them might have thought, what's your favourite thing you like watching on the telly? Some of them might have just thought you meant, which one do you generally feel better about? And some of them might have realised you meant, what should we play this afternoon? But if you ask a specific question and say, we have 100 minutes this afternoon, would you like to play football or soccer? And I'm aware that football and soccer are the same thing in some parts of the world, but I mean Australian rules football or soccer then people will know what question it is that you're asking. And when you report it back, you can say, when we asked people, would you like to play football or soccer this afternoon, 60% of people chose soccer. And then you have data that means something because it relates to a specific question. Now, there are two main types of questions, open and closed. A closed question means that, that you, have base, you are controlling the number of answers that they can give. An example of a closed question is, do you want to play football, footy or soccer this afternoon? Because they can only choose footy or soccer. And sometimes we want to do this. Sometimes as surveyors, we want to put people in the position of saying, don't worry about all the other factors in the world, but if you had to choose between it, what would you do? And one of the kind of in-jokes with parents is that you give your kids a choice about things. You say you can wear your red overalls or your green overalls, and that's what choice is. But either way, you're getting in some overalls and you're coming out to help me with the garden. So that's a closed question. And sometimes you might want that. If you know that the only available opportunities for us to, you know, go and walk our walkathon, uh, would you like to walk in the bush or by the sea, and they're the two choices, then you ask a closed question. And you can come back and say, when asked where they wanted to go for the walkathon, 73% of students chose the beach. And so you've got some hard data about that question. So closed questions aren't always bad questions. The strength of a closed question is it's very easy to graph it. You can very simply represent your results as saying, you know, 65% of people said A, the remaining 35% of people said B. It's nice and simple to get across. 
The other type of question that you can ask is an open question, where you're actually saying, here's a topic and you give me the answer you want to give me. So, what activity would you like to do? People might say, oh, I don't want to do any of those things. You know, I'd rather sit and read a book. I'd rather watch sport than play sport. So you could get any old thing. Now, that's harder to map, but it means that you're more open to the things that people might say. So that's what an open question is. So when you're writing your surveys, I want you to be really clear with yourself. Am I asking an open question or a closed question? And what type of information do I want? Because if I want anything they're thinking, don't ask them a closed question. But if I want to force them into choosing between a specific list of things, then you ask them a closed question. So another thing that you can ask them for, and this is a kind of closed question, is you can ask them rather than, would you prefer to exercise rather than watch TV? Is you could say, how many hours a week do you exercise? How many hours a week do you watch TV? Because lots of people are going to choose what they think is the correct answer. And they're going to say, oh, of course I'd rather exercise, because we all know that nobody wants to be a couch potato. But if you actually just ask them about their behaviour, you can say, you know, 50% of people said that they spend five or more hours, you know, a day in front of a screen, and less than half an hour exercising. So you can ask people for numbers as well, and you can ask for multiple questions to get one point. So you might not say to people, um, do you think a salad is better than a hamburger? But you could say, because most people are going to say, oh, the correct answer is the salad. What you could say is, how many times a month would you eat junk food, for want of a better description? How many times a month would you eat salad or vegetables? Because then you've got much more specific information that you can actually talk about. So think about making your questions specific and kind of intelligent by which I mean you're actually getting hold of a really hard fact rather than just saying, oh, most people could pick to name a salad. You can say, you know what, the 140 students we read, we surveyed, um, most people eat seven or more salads. Like 80% of people eat seven or more salads each month. And most people exercise for an hour or more a day. So those are things to think about. There are, of course, all kinds of tools that you can use, but we'll talk about them another time.